Hello, gorgeous people of the internet. Welcome to the full poster. Um, I'm in the throes. I'm deep, deep, deep in the zone. The zone of doing my new track. And it's just so exciting. It's so rewarding when you... I mean, I don't know about you when you're creating, but when I'm creating, I know... I know that my imagination holds the final result in a sort of ethereal way. So it's, I can't pinpoint it. Hello, Romeo. I can't pinpoint anything, but I, I know what I want from it. I know the, what the track has to evoke. That I'm very aware of. And I think most artists do that, you know, whether they're painting or making a uh, a piece of music or whatever. So I know what I... Have you just had your dinner? Bless him. Breakfast, I should say. Um, it's probably dinner for him because he gallivants during the night. I know he gallivants. There's evidence of gallivanting. Yes. Um, so I knew what I wanted to evoke from this piece, which is about friendship soured. Or, or actually friendship that was just a lie, okay? And I really liked this A major 6-9 chord. Loved it. Really very... It's a major chord, but it's got a minor feel about it somehow. It's it's quite... Um, oh, I, I don't know how to describe it. I would say it's unexpectedly bleak. <laughs> with a happy tone it's really weird it's a it's a, a chord of contradictions I think that's why I like it and of course um using the e minor as well really just having so much fun with it anyway I laid down about four piano tracks yesterday they're all rubbish because I I just couldn't quite get the groove I'm you know I had my drum track but really it's the vocals because that's why I'm called tale teller club because I'm a storyteller so it's it's not really till I've done the vocals that that the true um, evocative nature of the piece um, comes to fruition, and I would say this one's a, a little bit similar to Mister Capricious, which is my best selling track and my most favourite track. Romeo's purring loudly again in the background because he thinks I'm talking to him, of course. Anyway. Um, so I did these sort of four or five piano tracks and I've been putting them off, putting them off, putting them off because the piano parts scare me um, because I don't want to make mistakes and I, I knew that A major wasn't a, necessarily a chord or a scale that I'm particularly good at. I'm definitely good at E flat major and E minor and E flat minor. I'm good at all those. I I no idea why, but for some reason A major just wasn't coming to me fluidly through my fingers. Do you see what I mean? So t today I've got to go and practice for a couple of hours just A major, A major scales, A major arpeggios up and down the piano. That's what you have to do. That's what you have to do and then I'm going to practice this chord, this A major 6/9 which is, um, if, if you're a musician, you'll understand that, that you, your basic chord, um, it's your basic chord, but it, you add a couple of extra very special notes. And these notes are very special in the piece. Do you see what I mean? So, you know, I, I've got an affinity with this group of notes now and I want to create my waterfall music to it because I hope that's part of my sound. So anyway, I did the lyrics and they were, it was so interesting because the first take I did was a pretty, pretty, um, it was off, you know, the timing was a bit off because I just read through the lyrics and then I just improvised. And then I thought, right, now I'm going to do it properly. But the first one was the best one. Do you see what I mean? But there's a, uh, just one, one little bit that I need to go and redo because it wasn't quite timed correctly. Um, so I'm really excited about it and I do think by the end of today I would have done all of the music parts and then that means I can do the mix down tomorrow. So we, we should be able to get that out on Monday. I'm really pleased about it, really pleased. Um, I also got some tattoo time in because I think the, the thing with when you're doing something very intense, especially with headphones, 
And the track at the moment is five minutes long. So it takes five minutes to play right through. So you can imagine, you know, you've got to go backwards and forwards and play again, play again, play again. Today I'm being brutal. I've already over breakfast deleted a couple of parts of it. Right, that can go, that can go. Um, I want to lay down my bass track. And I want to do also today, the way I'm going to do my bass track, guys, is I'm not going to do it on the cello. I'm going to use the cello for a topper. So the cello is going to pick out some melody, some riffs, and play those. And I'll use my electric um, because it's uh, just easier, to be honest, to manipulate, to put it into the software. Um, and it's certainly easier to practice anyway because I don't want the neighbours having to listen to the acoustic with all that, you know, the, the horror that comes with trying to compose a track when you've got this bellowing because my my acoustic cello is so loud in the studio because of the concrete and the sound just sort of leaps everywhere so I'm going to use the electric and what I can do you see tomorrow I can or today whenever I get time if I really like a part of it I can do two or three notes just two or three notes on the acoustic cello and um record them and then insert them into the song strategically and you just get a slightly more orchestral feeling or certainly a, the string section. Do you see what I mean? Um, so, and the other thing, of course, I can do is I can pretend to be a violin with the, um, with the electric cello uh, or the acoustic, I mean, but it's easier if you've got a MIDI a MIDI input. So you play your cello. And, and what I find is if you're going to pretend to be a violin, play in the violin register. So don't play notes that the violin can't reach. It's too low, in other words. The resonances aren't in its, um, within its uh, capacity, its range. Do you see what I mean? Um, I mean, you could do it if you want to be... You, you would end up with strange results, is what I'm saying. And actually, what I want for this piece is I want quite a traditional um, backing, the, the, you know, the, the piano and the cello and what have you. I want to sound fairly traditional. It's quite folk songy, I think. Um, and, you know, I love Vaughan Williams and all that kind of folk styling. I really like it. I think it's got legs, guys. I think it has many, many legs. So I'm um, doing lots of layering, playing around with my voices and I've obviously got Flex involved and I've got Vapor Punk involved and that's really exciting too. Um, so yeah, I think, I think I'm going to have a really um, emotionally charged weekend because funny enough, the first time I played it, it did bring tears to my eyes. It's quite, um, you know, it's a difficult song because it's about people that I've known, you know, who, who were friends but they lied, you know, and that's a difficult thing, isn't it? That's, um, it's horrible to find out that you're, you know, you're not actually liked for who you are. You're just used. I mean, that's one of the worst feelings, isn't it? I mean, look, don't get me wrong. I don't have sleepless nights about it. It was just, uh, it came up and, you know, somewhere, somehow it uh, arrived in my head, this notion. And I wanted to write a song about it. Um, so there we go. And it's a, a break of about three months, I think, where I haven't written, written a song other than the music therapy. Now, I did music therapy for impotence the other day. Not impudence, impotence. Um, not getting it up, guys. You know the one? And uh, I, I don't know if I told you, but I put a drum track on it because there's nothing better than a drum track to, to get the sexy juice grow, going. <laughs> I love the drums. I mean, as soon as I put the drums on this track, and I've only just put a, a soft drum on it, you know, to um, to guide me uh, while I record. It's not the, the final drum. But it just made me, it just gave, gave me the groove, you know? Gave me the groove. And I thought, oh, how lovely. So um, I think drumming f is so humanly sexual and sensual that that's why dance music's so successful because it it's sexy you know it cuts to that core and it makes you swing your hips it makes you grind you know 
it, it, all of that comes with a drum section. And funny enough, even when I do an orchestral piece, I use the the orchestra drum sessions. You know the um, the timpani and all of that. I love all that because it just gives it some boom boom. You know, every now and then, and you think, oh hello. Oh, darling, that's rather good. Do you know what I mean? That oh, sort of little tweak, little a little something, a little je ne sais quoi, rather than just relying on you know swallows flying on wing in sky. Um, not to Vaughan Williams, obviously, which is very beautiful, but you know to rely on that when you're um, when you're creating the sort of music that I create. Which you know, it's not going to have the, it's never going to have the audience that Vaughan Williams enjoys. Um, maybe when I die, who knows? I don't know. Um, but not not while I'm alive, certainly not. So, you know, how how do you enrapture people in sort of three or four minutes? What do you use to seduce the listener? What what tools does the musician have? And the drums, for me, is definitely a, a shortcut to sexiness um, and um, just, I suppose, friendliness as well, you know? Because when you're in a room with lots of people, that's why we like gigs, isn't it? When you're in a room with other people and they're tapping their feet and you start to let go, don't you? You start to kind of just feel that kind of, oh, oh, you know, you start with your shoulders maybe and then your your foot goes... And then your hips go, you know, and suddenly you want to stand up and some and sometimes you want to really dance like a crazy bitch. I mean, I never do that. Never. I never let myself go on the dance floor. Um, I'm far too self-conscious. Um, I remember when I used to drink, I used to come home and look in the mirror and do an expressive dance session. And I, I'd always think I'm going to that's it. I'm going to be an expressive dancer. And then the next day, the confidence had all gone. <laughs> it, it went with my hangover. Um, but I don't drink anymore, so I never feel like that anymore. It's just interesting, isn't it? So my music is my channel for for the movement that I yearn to do but cannot. So um, on that note, I suppose I better go and get on with some work. Um, I don't think there's any news to tell you um, fresh off the fresh fresh off the press, other than. All my podcasts are now live on YouTube. 4,000 or 5,000 of them. Can you believe that? I put them on uh, Tail Teller Club Publishing and I put all my podcasts, my current podcasts on there as well. So these are historic podcasts that I've been doing for, you know, for a few years now. So they're all they're all available for free. Um, they, I just think the advertising market has sort of, taken a a lunge so pushing it is not really you know pushing it for sales pushing it to get ad revenue um is is not really working for me so this four months that I'm having off spending money means I don't have to you know try and make money it's a little reprieve so I'm considering this four months actually as a bit of a rest to do things that I really really love oh and talking about money um I notice, I just, I go in sort of daily to look at my record sales and Mr Capricious is the best selling one so far, thus far ever. Um, and I was looking down at all, you know, the where I get my revenue from, where my revenue streams are coming from. And um, Facebook and TikTok have paid me about a penny in the last quarter. And you just think, oh, h- hang on a minute. How many times, I mean, I was creating music and getting thousands of hits on TikTok with my music. That's not why they were hitting. They were hitting because it was tattoo stuff, I think. Um, And I've made a penny. That's just ridiculous. Ridiculous. So I'm glad I got rid of my TikTok and my Facebook because it's an insult, isn't it? I think that's an insult, really. Um, I mean, you, I'm still, I, you can still share my music, I think, on TikTok. Um, you can still sample it. So this new one, We Were Never Friends, that's a really good one to sample. But I don't have to do the work because they don't pay me enough. 
Telltelegraph.club. No, telltelegraph.com. Sorry. <laughs>